Jesus said that if I thirst, I should come to him. No one else can satisfy, I should come to him. Well, the word for today, and uh, Kevin's going to put it up for us, we might read it today together. He's, he's engaged there. Let's read it together. Jerusalem, stand up, shine. Your new day is dawning. The glory of the Lord shines on you. The earth and its people are covered with darkness, but the glory of the Lord is shining upon you. Nations and kings will come to the light of your dawning day. This is a good word. This is an encouraging word. This is a word of life and light for, for people everywhere. And I hope it, it lightens up your lives today. Um, the opening sentences for today actually come out of that same chapter of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Let's share the invocation together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, Jesus says, I've, I've come as light into the world, so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in the darkness. So therefore, my friends, you and I are people who carry darkness with us. Let us take time now to confess the darkness that sin brings into our lives and ask the Lord for mercy in the name of Jesus. You may be seated, or you're more like may like to kneel. So, we confess to you, Almighty God, before the whole company of heaven and to each other. Now, what are you confessing? Think. That we have sinned in thought, word and deed by our own fault. And what are we asking for? What do we hope for of the Lord? And we'll pray that, shall we? Have mercy on us for Jesus' sake. Forgive us all our sins and bring us to eternal life. Amen. And the good news is this. Almighty God has had mercy on us. He's given his only son to die for us, to go into the darkness for us, to overcome the darkness for, for us. For his sake, for the sake of Jesus, he forgives us all our sins. More than that, to those who believe in his name, he's given the right to become the children of God. He's given them his Holy Spirit. He promises whoever believes and is baptised will be saved. And so we can confidently pray, can't we? Grant this, Lord, to us all. Amen. The Lord be with you. And now we're going to listen to his word, knowing that he is with us as we listen Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. May he judge your people in righteousness, your afflicted ones with justice. All kings will bow down to him, and all nations will serve him. May the mountains bring prosperity to the people, the hills the fruit of righteousness. May he defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy. May he crush the oppressor. May he endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon, through all generations. May he be like rain falling on a new mown field, like showers watering the earth. And in his days, may the righteous flourish and prosperity abound till the moon is no more. All kings will bow down to him and all nations will serve him. Let's pray now together as the rest of the word is opened up to us. Eternal God, you led the wise men by the shining of a star to adore your Son. Guide the nations by his light so that the whole world sees your glory. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Just so from Isaiah 60, starting at verse 1. Jerusalem, stand up, shine. Your new day is dawning. The glory of the Lord shines brightly on you. The earth and its people are covered with darkness, but the glory of the Lord is shining upon you. Nations and kings will come to the light of your dawning day. The Lord said, open your eyes, look around, crowds are coming. Your sons are on their way from distant lands. Your daughters are being carried like little children. When you see this, your faces will glow. Your hearts will pound and swell with pride. Treasures from across the sea and the wealth of the nations will be brought to you. Your country will be covered with caravans of young camels from Midian and Ephesus. The people of Sheba will bring gold and spices in praise of me, the Lord. Mm -hmm. This is a word of promise from the Lord. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much Lord, for, this for this living, living promise. promise. And from Ephesians chapter 3, starting at verse 1. Christ Jesus made me his prisoner, so I could help you Gentiles. You have surely, surely heard about God's gift of undeserved grace in choosing me to help you. In fact, this letter tells you a little about how God has shown me his mysterious ways. As you read the letter, you will also find out how well I really do understand the mystery about Christ. No one knew about this mystery until God's Spirit told it to his holy apostles and prophets. And the mystery is this. Because of Christ Jesus, the good news has given the Gentiles a share of the promises God gave to the Jews. God has also let the Gentiles be part of the same body. God treated me with kindness. His power worked in me and it became my job to spread the good news. I am the least important of all God's people, but God was kind and chose me to tell the Gentiles that because of Christ, there are blessings that cannot be measured. God, who created everything, wanted me to help everyone understand the mysterious plan that had always been hidden in his mind. Then God would use the church to show the powers and authorities in the spiritual world that he has many different kinds of wisdom. God did this according to his eternal plan, and he was able to do what he had planned because of all Christ Jesus our Lord had done. Christ, uh, Christ now, now gives, gives us, us courage, courage and confidence so that we come to God by faith. And this is a word from the Lord that welcomes all people into his kingdom. Thank, Thank you, Lord, Lord for, for this blessed, blessed invitation. invitation. And from Matthew chapter 2, also beginning at verse 1. When Jesus was born in the village of Bethlehem in Judea, Herod was king. During this time, some wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and said, Where is the child born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was worried, and so everyone else, and so was everyone else in Jerusalem. Herod brought together the chief priests and the teachers of the law of Moses and asked them, where will the Messiah be born? They told him, he will be born in Bethlehem, just as the prophet wrote. Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, you are very important among the towns of Judea. From your town will come a leader who will be like a shepherd for my people Israel. Herod secretly called in the wise men and asked them when they had first seen the star. He told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, let me know. I also want to go and worship him. The wise men listened to what the king said and then left. And the star they had seen in the east went on ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They were thrilled and excited to see the star. When the men went into the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother, they knelt down and worshipped him. They took out their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh and gave them to him. Later, they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod and they went back home by another road. This is the good news of the Lord. We, we praise, praise you, O Christ. Christ.
In that Bible word we heard before, the Old Testament prophet who was very old, he had a special word from God for people. And I've just pulled out just a just four words from that. And those words are, stand up and shine. Do you want to say that? Stand up and shine. Now, you're sitting down, I know now, but you don't have to stand up literally. But when you get up and out and about, shine. That's what he's saying. And it means to be kind of like shining like lights. Does that mean you have to get switched to an, into an electric light socket to shine? No. My sister thought that meant that. And when she was a little kid, she pulled a plug out and put a finger in and... It kicked her, it didn't make a shine. (laughs) So don't do that with um, light plugs, it's bad. So I thought, stand up and shine, how do people shine? So I got to think of three S words. I don't know, what do you think? How do people shine? Yep. Um, Stand. Stand, well, yeah, well, yeah, that's when they're out there, yeah, that's one. Anything else? Any S words? Shine. Shine. Yeah. How do you do that? Stand, shine. How do you do that? So, all right, here I go. I'll give you three. Three very simple ones. And the first one is smile. Exactly, Beverly. I reckon. Yeah. See, and I love it when I go to visit Beverly's mum. Beverly's mum's in hospital. She's had a stroke. And you know what happens when I go in there? She smiles. <laughs> And there's a lady in hospital smiling even when all these hard things are happening. By golly, that's a good thing. And um, I love it when people smile. And I tell you what, your parents love it when you smile. Is that right, parents and grandparents? You love it? And uncles and aunties love it when you smile. It's a good thing, a very special thing. And then the second thing is, it's um, to share. To share. So I've got a bit of a picture there, to share things, you know. Sometimes if it's just us living in our own little dark little place, all we want to do is keep stuff to ourselves. But a great way of shining is actually sharing what you have. Share your time, share your toys, share your love. What else could you share? Yeah, Yeah. share your sister. She can be a sister to other people too, do you reckon? Yeah, possibly. Yeah? Yeah. Share your family. Yeah, how do you do that, Tobe? Instead of you just um, like, um, like not letting anyone play with your parents, you can like let them also have turns with your parents. You can let other people have turns with your parents. Oh, I like that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, a, that's a great moment, Toby. Yeah, share your family. And you can do things like invite people around to your family. Um, and sometimes we know people that don't have big families of their own and it's a good thing. Oh, sorry, little dot. Yeah. Sometimes it's a good thing to share a family. And what do you reckon the last one is? And the last one's a different one. It's serve. This is shining your light when you serve. Now, I was looking for photos of people serving. What sort of ways do kids serve? Yes, Summer? You can serve by helping your teachers, yeah? Um, when, you, when someone else makes a mess and they forget to clean up, you can... Yeah, when someone else makes a mess in your grandparents' living room, <laughs> you can help clean it a surf. Like, yes, I like that. That's great. I'll remind you of that. <laughs> Other ways of serving? I won't mention who makes those messes. No. Other ways of serving? Yeah. There's lots of ways, isn't there, you grown-up kids? And as you get older, you're going to discover things. And one of the things that your mums and dads can do is, is teach you how to serve other people. And they'll teach you how to do that by showing you how they do it and inviting you to help them serve, which is a great way to be, isn't it? So we've got those three things. Smile, share, serve. They're great ways to shine like lights, to be like God's light in the world. And um, I hope and pray you can do that. Let's pray for the little ones. Heavenly Father, watch over these little ones as they grow, even right here and now. Help them to stand up and shine, to be your shining presence in their homes, at school, uh, and wherever they go in life as they grow. Help them to stand up and shine. And be your living presence in the world, we pray in whose name? Jesus' name.
Amen. God bless you, kids. Great to see you all here today. It really is. How'd that arrive? Did I get things out of order? Oh, that's a song we're going to sing. Yeah. You can do it, all do it together, big kids and little kids. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. One more time. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Well, something amazing happened six days ago. What was it? Oh, turning over a new year isn't an amazing thing anymore, is it? No. Ah, it's New Year's Day. Or maybe you made an amazing New Year's resolution. Maybe. Oh, Auntie Lucy, you're losing the touch. (laughs) Or is it something that Mum's got that you haven't got right now? (laughs) Could be. (laughs) I was reading in uh, Facebook, as is my want at the moment, and uh, saw this come through from a friend of mine. And he thought, this was interesting New Year's resolution, if you can see it. He said, my New Year's resolution is to hang out with sinners, and he corrected that, with other sinners. No, that's not what set me apart. <laughs> hang out with sinners, upset religious people. Oh, yeah. Tell stories that make people think. What about choosing unpopular friends? Or be kind and loving and merciful. Uh, we, 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 were, we were blessed to go to the graduation of our granddaughter Holly and all of these sevens, two big classes of year sixes at their graduation. And what do you aspire to? And I reckon 90% of them said, to be known, to be kind. I thought, wow, what are they learning in this school? This sounds like a good school. <laughs> Maybe more than 90%. What do you reckon, Rach? Yeah, it's amazing to be kind because we don't live in a kind, kind of world at times, do we? And the last one, to take naps on boats. Now, I don't know where he got that idea from. (laughs) Not a bad set of New Year's resolutions, is it? Frank does naps on boats, yeah. Goes without saying. I want to bless you and carry on. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour Jesus. Amen. Amen. There's a classic hymn, and it's not often sung these days, but it goes like this. You ready? Stand up, stand up for Jesus, stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you, you dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armour, each piece put on with prayer. Where duty calls or danger, be never wanting there. Oh, I could just imagine you all getting up and marching out to war. But nah. But in the light of the word that we're here today, perhaps we might reword this old hymn. Stand up. And shine for Jesus, shine in his love alone. We live in times of darkness, deep darkness of our own. Lord, shine your light within us till we can't help but glow. And be your shining presence in every place we go. Your word, Lord, calls us to stand up and shine. We don't always find that easy on account of the darkness, the darkness of sin within and the darkness of sin that sometimes surrounds us. Encourage us now with your word so that we might be bold and brave when it comes to shining the light of your love in our lives and around us. Amen. Joy and I have friends in New Zealand who've referred to us as, you're Australian. A bit of, little bit of big brother, little brother goes on between uh, New Zealand and Australia, be assured of that. 
And the implication is that because we're Australians, we're far more brash and out there than the average Kiwi. Mm, no. I can tell you it's not necessarily the case. Quite the opposite, in fact, at times. I'm not so sure that all of us actually consider ourselves so out there, so bold, so courageous and so brash. Let alone when it comes to shining and sharing our faith. That it takes us into a different space. I suspect we've grown up, perhaps, with the idea that people who share faith have some kind of superpower, some kind of super confidence, some kind of spirit wisdom or something that gives them an ability that most of us don't have. That is, to shine out our faith in a way that shares faith and encourages other people in their lives to maybe get to know the light that is Jesus. I also wonder whether inside of us sometimes we've given up on the idea of sharing faith with the neighbours that we've known for decades or maybe only for a year. Whether we've kind of thought, oh, they know we're Christians, they haven't asked us about Jesus and they haven't come to church with us and maybe they don't really want to know. Maybe we're a bit worried about being rejected or or disconnected from them in some way. I wonder whether, does that happen to you? It sort of happens to me sometimes. I wonder whether sometimes people who we've known all of our lives, have known us so long, have, have also perhaps rejected our faith. They want the human bits from us, but they don't want the faith stuff. They're quite comfortable in darkness, like we sometimes get comfortable in darkness, and they shy away from the light. Like we sometimes shy away from the light because the light, when it shines on us, actually shines from the inside out and it actually shines on the darkness in our lives. Maybe people don't want that. I don't know. This is something I wonder about. What I do know is darkness in people's lives is absolutely real. In yours and mine, you know it, I know it. I also know that the light of the world has come, has been sent into the world to shine out and dispel this darkness so that we're, we're set free from the darkness that actually encumbers us. And to live a life, a life, what Jesus say, I've come that you may have life and have it in all its fullness and not be encumbered by the dark stuff. God knows there's enough of that to take it on board willingly, but sometimes it happens. I wonder sometimes if living with sin and guilt becomes even ingrained in Christian people, God's people, that we become dulled to the possibility of guilt-free living, which is what Jesus offers us. Jesus, the light of the world, who who took on our darkness, who went into the darkest of places for us, who overcame the darkness and rose up, the Prince of Peace, the light of the world, and who now invites us to, to be with him, like Winifred Wanda, baptised into him, that his light shines not just on us, but in us and through us into the world. I wonder sometimes, maybe the knowledge of the glory of, law, of the Lord shining upon us, as, as Isaiah says, and the glory of the Lord will shine on you, I wonder whether the knowledge of that glory shining on us confronts our natural human reticence, our reluctance to actually stand up and be counted, to stand up and shine. I wonder, just saying, stand out from the crowd and be bold. This Australian crowd needs people to stand up and be bold. On Monday, there's a, a Remembrance Day being invited. You'll see a notice about it later by Love Adelaide to, to remember the little ones who have been aborted. Sometime between six and six on Monday, it invites people to stand up and be counted, take a bunch of flowers, take a ribbon, something, and lay it on the steps of Parliament, reminding our community 
of the little ones who have died. Not as a judgment, but remember, these little ones are loved by God. So we come to a question, is faith central and foundational to our lives? Or are the things of the darkness sometimes more important in our lives? Do we need to re-examine our priorities as to what really is important? I know there's some really important things in your life. I know your finances are important. I know your family's important. I know your education is important. I know your status is important. I know where you live is important. I know your neighbourhood is important. But what is the most important thing? That's, that's the question. That's a challenge. Is the most important thing to know Jesus and to rest in his light and to shine his light and let his light shine in our lives, to let him forgive us, to let him set us free so that we can shine his light in all those other places. We can shine the light of God's love in our marriage, in our finances, in our workspaces, in our friendships, in all our relationships. What's the foundation? What's the only foundation that lasts? Perhaps what Isaiah is challenging us with today is two things. Firstly, to know that the glory of the Lord is shining on us, to face that challenge, and to know that in our humanity we live and struggle with darkness. Today God promises us, and he's always promised it, he's promised us a new day. Today can be a fresh day in your life and mine. Maybe a fresh day to re-examine the things that we give priority to in our lives. Maybe time to put faith as the foundation, the light of Christ as the foundation of all the other things that fill up our lives. Let faith shine from the inside out. Let faith inform our financial decisions. Let the light of Christ inform our relational decisions. Let the light of Christ inform our vocational decisions. Can we look at our lives and whatever might be there waiting for us in our future with confidence and courage and no longer be weighed down with darkness? Just as a bit of an aside, I think this business of shining the light, of sharing faith is sometimes we, we, we kind of is shaped by some of our past experiences. I remember as a kid, um, of course, I didn't have much way of getting away from this, nor did my siblings. My dad was a pastor and he, from time to time, we would have visiting missionaries, very important. <laughs> and to us, they were these, oh, gee, there's a super Christians, you know. They've done stuff, been places, and we go, wow, wow, wow. And what does that make us feel? Mm -hmm. That's them. <laughs> That's them. They're super people. They're not like us, you know. <laughs> I wonder whether we do that sometimes with other people and other, other spheres of our lives, and we forget that God has created us to be as much missionaries, as much people who shine the light as these super people. But remember this, inevitably the very fact that you are here today in this space is because some ordinary person has shared some light with you, has shone the light of God's love into your life. Some ordinary person has done that. Not a super-powered, high-powered missionary, not, not, not Billy Graham, not, well, maybe it was a friend who actually, an ordinary friend who took you to listen to Billy Graham or something like that, you know. Maybe it was a parent, maybe it was a grandparent, maybe it was an uncle or an auntie, maybe it was a friend. Ordinary people can do extraordinary things in the kingdom of God. And maybe it was something as simple as, and we hear stories of this, this kind of thing from the Gideons, who give away Bibles, and they love to tell stories about people who've found a Gideon Bible in an unexpected place, like the fella who needed toilet paper out on an outback track in the Kimberley and, and he didn't have any paper and he, and he found a Gideon Bible and he, he opened it up to use some paper and he thought, oh, this is interesting. 
And God spoke to him through that Gideon Bible. I don't know what he did with the paper after that. But, but God spoke to him and changed the person's life in a very ordinary kind of situation. Real stories, ordinary stuff. God does extraordinary things, shining his light into the hearts and lives of people. We should never discount that God has always been at work through his word in the hearts and lives of ordinary people, of other people like you and me, people that you know, that I know. These ordinary people who've received this extraordinary light of God's love and they find themselves coming out of the dark into the light, away from sin into forgiveness and freedom done by Jesus in a way that nothing and nobody else can do. It's how people of faith live. It's nothing extraordinary about it. It's the way of life for faith people to shine. Like we had here, the three S's, to smile, <laughs> to share, to serve. And, and Biv, and Biv, and And, and to speak, yeah, to share perhaps God's word. And, and to even to say things to somebody like, I love you. <laughs> I love you. No, no holds barred, no wrong impressions, just to be real. Let it be real. Um, God has new things for us. New opportunities to speak words of encouragement, new opportunities to smile at new opportunities to share, new opportunities to serve. Open our eyes, Lord, so that we can see these things. Israel, of, uh, the nation of Israel had kind of lost some of that stuff. They're, they're out there, they're, they're basically feeling like our day is done. It's all over, Rover. God has abandoned us. And that's, that's to whom God sends Isaiah. Stand up and shine, he says to this dispirited, disenfranchised bunch of people who are still fighting a battle. He says to them, stand up and shine. I listened to a fellow, uh, he's actually the um, Anglican rector of Christ Church, the oldest Christian church in Jerusalem. And what's the answer to this crunch over there? And he says, it's, it's for people to know the light of God's love, effectively. To know that there is forgiveness possible. We don't have to go around carrying the darkness of revenge and death in our hearts anymore. So even that comes down even to you and me here in Australia, in our neighbourhood, in our family. We make a difference when we shine the light of God's love wherever we go. When we smile and we share and when we serve. Don't ever resile from that. What new things is God doing in your life now? Open their eyes. What inspiration, what thoughts of, of something new has he sown in your heart and mind? Who has he laid on your heart and mind to love in a new way today? We'll pray. Dear Lord, please shine the path ahead of each one of us, individually and all of us together. Show us how you do new things in each of us. Make us your living, shining presence in the world every day, everywhere. We know you have shining to do in and through each one of us. Do it, Lord, in the name of Christ. Amen. And now may the peace of God that is deeper than all our hearts and minds, all our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free from the truth you now bring us. Shine on me.
draws him to your radiance by the blood i may enter your brightness search me try me consume all my darkness shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine fill this land with the father's glory please spirit please set our hearts on fire forever flow let the nations with grace and mercy sing forth your word Lord and let there be light as we gaze on your kingly brightness Faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Mirror, dear, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me, shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Play, Spirit, play. Please receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 The light of Christ has come into the world. The light of Christ has come into the world. For people must be born again to see the kingdom of God. The water and the spirit bring you life in God's love. Light of Christ has come into the world. The light of Christ has come into the world.